Guys, it's that time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and now without further ado, we'd like to bring you Ray Ibarra, New Media Radio Hour. Here's Ray. Bam. All right, all right. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, you guys. Hey, welcome, everybody. I'm Ray Ibarra. Welcome to the New Media Radio Hour television program, uh, the show that features a... Uh, uh, entrepreneurs from the hit television show Shark Tank. We're continuing our series here, and before I introduce our special, special guest, uh, I just like to uh, talk to you about my upcoming multimedia book that's going to be released July 31st of this year. Conversations with Shark Tank winners: How the Shark Tank Effect dramatically increased sales, exposure, and more for these successful entrepreneurs. And we have a successful entrepreneur in studio with us today. She's one half of Baby's Badass Burgers. You've seen her recently on the smash hit television show Shark Tank. Erica Cohen joins us. Erica, welcome. Hi, thank you. All right. <laughs> Thanks for taking time out of your schedule to be with us. Of tell course. us about um, tell us about your experience on Shark Tank. Baby's Badass Burgers. Uh <laughs> I could sum it up by saying it's whatever you expect, it's the opposite. It was nothing like, it did not go at all as we anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, with the questions that they asked, what I was prepared for versus what we got. Um, so it was definitely a surprise, mm -hmm. a big surprise. Probably the biggest surprise in, in our business careers, just in as far as what you prepare versus what actually happens. Now you come from a background where your passion is food and fashion. That's mm -hmm. a great combination. How did you come about that? Um, <laughs> I was in the fashion industry in New York for many years and I was living in Italy at the time and I just have always been you know, really obsessed with food and wine um, as well as fashion and the two very much so at least in, in what I was doing were intertwined. Um, and I think at that point, I became a little disenchanted with the fashion industry mm -hmm. and really started to obsess more and more over this, you know, getting into the restaurant world and owning a restaurant. And um, I was fortunate enough to, you know, partner up with some wonderful people and who all had, you know, something that they brought to the table. And it was a lot of luck talent and um, it just came together really nicely so moved back to New York and got out of fashion and decided that I was just going to go full force and try to open a restaurant. Now you're a partner Lori Barbera she's great with events yes. and how did you two hook up because that has made an incredible combination you opened up a lot of restaurants in New York you're very mm -hmm. successful back here before you moved out here. Uh, I actually thank you I actually moved out here to LA to open um, a west coast spot mm -hmm. of our East Coast uh, restaurant in New York in the Meatpacking District and while I was out here Lori ran all of the events um, for the one group and at that time the restaurant and then many more um, we became you know really fast friends worked together every day ate together every day <laughs> drank together every night and um, you know they, we had just a really nice dichotomy as far as going into business together because through six degrees of separation, the woman knows everyone in LA and is just amazing at what she does for events. I mean, she's just got, you know, it, she just is unbelievable. Um, so it lends itself to a really nice partnership. Mario, anything you, you know, want to know? You know, it is a unique pairing. Everybody take a look at the picture we have, have here uh, showing the ladies and outside the truck. The Because it's one thing to hear about it, but it's another thing to actually take it in. It is impressive. <laughs> um, it's a lot of pink. A lot of pink, a lot of pink, and they have some stuff. Take a look. The menu. And later on, uh, we're going to be able to take you to the site and show you some of the celebrities, okay, uh, at the website, Wonderful Pictures of the burgers so whenever you're ready Ray we will be able to show them <laughs> the burgers the uh, the site because I had to admit just taking that little preview wow yeah you, you know that yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you've done a fantastic you job of that. now one of your passions your other passions is cheeseburgers yes okay so that that's really kind of uh, mm -hmm. it's different <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how did this all come about in terms of like you know hey cheeseburgers is my passion one of my passions okay. well I have my dad to thank for that um, ever since mm -hmm. I can remember the little girl I mean every Sunday literally we used to go on like a cheeseburger hunt 
and try and find our you know favorite cheeseburger. I mean, Dad's a cheeseburger lover. I am my bro- I mean, our whole family is obsessed with cheeseburgers. Mm-hmm. Um, so it really, I, honestly, from a very young age, it sounds so silly, but I've just always kind of been in search of like the quintessential burger. That's my thing. I love a good cheeseburger. Um, on our menu at a restaurant, there was Erica's badass baby burgers, and people loved them. It was one of our best selling items. So that's kind of where the you know, foundation for at least it's called the original beauty on our menu today. Um, and that's, you know, cheeseburgers was always my thing. Lori loved them as well. It was a perfect pair. Um, but the fact that they were on our menu, um, kind of elevated it already. Now, so is that a, be- is that a bestseller? Your cheeseburger? The original beauty is yeah. kind of our signature burger. Now you have a lot of celebrities that, that, that come around, uh, visit you. Mm-hmm. I saw some of the photos, uh, that you sent me. A lot of celebrities and things. What has that uh, environment been like for you guys, seeing celebrities come up? and uh, Because we're talking about some friends of yours, too, that have come in here for the project as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim and, and Sabin from uh, Cousins Maine Lobster. Yes. And it seems like celebrities, man, out, out here, uh, I don't know how it is in New York back east, but, uh, man, when they food is really good, right. food is really good, they yes. gravitate to it. Yes. What has that been like? It's been amazing. Um, and most of these celebrities, you know, it, we do events with them, and they're reoccurring, you know, repeat customers. So we'll go to, you know, their movie sets, productions, um, and they use us again and again. At the end of the day, look, the concept is fun, it's playful, um, you get great service, they happen, you know, you get served what by cute girls but at the end of the day it's all about the product and the mm-hmm. burgers are fantastic and like you just said when you have a great product people will come back so we've just kind of established this celebrity niche um, I think because of our our brand and what we do um, it's not your typical food truck experience it, we try and add a little glam to the trucker <laughs> world you know we're trucker glam as glam we like to beauty. coin it and so I think that that has you know that panache maybe it's what attracts the celebrities and, and at the end of the day it's a great cheeseburger now I want to play devil's advocate here a little bit uh, do you ever get flack for using beautiful women to sell your burgers or to promote that has anybody come up to you and given you a bad time about that um not in person when we first opened we got a lot of slack about you know in, in, Honestly, I think most people thought we were men. You know, they were saying it was sexist, and uh, I mean, and then they found out it was actually two girls. But um, not so much, not since we opened. And like I said, you know, it's we serve an amazing product, and you happen to be served by cute, friendly girls. Great. I mean, this is America. Well, right. take a look, everybody. We take a look, and I'm going to scroll down slowly for your unique watching pleasure. Here's the truck. <laughs> And I'm going to scroll up because what happens is that you seem to end up wanting to pick your favorite in some kind of a way. I well, mean, sometimes, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, for events, um, a lot of clients, you know, say, oh, is Tori free? Is, you know, Melissa working? And, you know, they can want to pick their burger favorite. babes. And Michelle's a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Michelle's a beauty. They're all they're all beauties. They're well, all sweethearts. Let's talk about your Shark Tank experience a little more in detail here. Now, uh, you were looking to get an inv- investment money to open up a restaurant, right? And the, the sharks uh, all came at you, saying, "Well, why do you want to open up a restaurant? You're you're doing really great mm-hmm. with a food truck. Uh, overhead is not that expensive. All sorts of uh, uh, explanations that they were giving you, resisting you. Right. Okay, talk to us about." Uh, what you wanted to do when you went on Shark Tank and the outcome of the whole thing and in between when they were arguing with you on the show? Well, we went on Shark Tank, you know, number one, first and foremost, for the tremendous exposure that that show gets. Um, I knew going into it, we both did, that we had a very, very slim chance of getting a deal simply because to my knowledge, up until that point, they have never invested in a restaurant, which I understand. It's the riskiest business you can get into. Mm-hmm. Nine out of ten fail. Mm-hmm. You're nuts to get open into you know That's get right. into that world. That is right. However, I come from that world and I have experience in that world and been successful in that world. Um, so I think going into it at the bottom level, we knew we felt that if they didn't take the deal, there was going to be someone out there who saw the concept, believed in what we were doing saw the proven success that we had with our trucks and was going to say, you know what, (laughs) I'll do it, you know, and essentially, you know, we did get a lot of responses like that. So it it proved, you know, it it served very well. Now, what I didn't expect, um, you know, we've had, you know, budgets working with our accountants. We, you know, no numbers. I mean, all of that, I could tell you off the top of my head. I mean, if they actually asked me, okay, so go ahead and break down, you know, how it's going to take $350,000 to open a 1500 square foot restaurant. 
they would have had all those answers. But what I wasn't expecting is to have no conversation whatsoever about, okay, let's break this down, let's see what we have, and instead it was just, you're crazy, do more trucks, why do you want a restaurant, restaurants fail, you don't know what you're talking about. So it was just, um, we were really not expecting that. We were expecting at least to, you know, give um, an explanation of our experience and who we are and based on those numbers. I don't, it's not such a crazy thing. I, the thing I think that perplexed me most and, and most people um, that I've spoken to have said, you know, it's not that insane to wrap your head around the fact that you have a truck, it's doing really, really well, and then you move it to a brick and mortar. I mean, if you mm -hmm. talk to many, you know, nine out of 10 trucks will say that's kind of the dream. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I, I couldn't, it wasn't, I didn't understand how they couldn't make that leap that was what was it was very frustrating to me um so when i say you know it was unexpected the response it was due to that i really just it was just all about the trucks you know it, it, i kind of caught on to that too but I was so impressed that this was not your first rodeo, okay? Yeah. I mean, it's not like a lot of the other folks who are doing the trucks, who either it's their first venture, or like you said, they're, it's a big leap for them, sure. what they're taking. For you, this is actually a way easier undertaking than what you've done in the past in you, some the ways. The restaurant is easier than the truck. Oh, really? Absolutely. Anything Tell us about that can that. go wrong in a restaurant huh. will, okay? But a truck is a restaurant, but it's on four wheels. Oh. You break down, the <laughs> engine goes, your generator doesn't work, the fryer is broken. I didn't even think it about is, that. <laughs> I'm Let's telling just, you right now, I give res mad respect for anyone who owns trucks because it is a tough business. Logistically, it's a, I would think that that is, that is a lot more difficult. And then where because, are you parking? Where yeah. are you going? You show up. Are they going to come? I mean, it's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. A restaurant is easier. So what then uh, lessons did you, did you take away from uh, your experience on Shark Tank? I mean, you were getting all these questions and, and, and statements thrown at you about uh, why you want to open up a restaurant, just stay with a truck. Do you think the Sharks would have invested in you if you said, look, we want to, we want to start... Uh, uh, two or three more uh, trucks or a truck line. You think you would have gotten an investment? Um, I do. I mean, from what they said, you know, they wanted to do the trucks. Um, you know, truth be told, we're doing the trucks on our own. So that's happening. And t honestly, th the guys are right. I mean, if we have one truck and it's it's wildly successful, why not have three more? We can still open the restaurant. But we went on the show to pitch a restaurant, to pitch a brick and mortar, and we weren't going to change course. In addition to the fact that we were funding the trucks by ourselves, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to give up equity yeah. of something I worked my ass off to do for four <laughs> years, raised my own money, and I know I can do it on my own. Yeah. I need the money for the restaurant. Okay, so what benefits then uh, from going on Shark Tank? What does what the Shark Tank effect uh, define the Shark Tank okay. effect, and what has it done for your business? Um, it, it's an unbelievable experience. I'm so happy and feel blessed that we were actually given the opportunity to go on that show because your business increases dramatically, your exposure increases dramatically. I mean, it's the show is a godsend. I mean, honestly, we were inundated, you know, afterwards with emails, calls, you know, our event business doubled, yeah. tripled in that one month following um, the release. And like I said, um, wow. we have now have many really great opportunities that we're looking at to do our brick and mortar and not just one, like companies that we just, you know, if it comes to fruition, I'm blown away because yeah. it's all due to Shark Tank. Danny Nardo from Nardo's Natural told me this uh, during our interview for, for the project. Uh, he said, Ray, I, I, one thing that I, I, that I totally overlooked from going on the show was that celebrities watch the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, he partnered, I won't say with who mm -hmm. it was, but he's, mm -hmm. he's partnered with a major, major sports athlete that's right. endorsing him because of the show. So the, the uh, so the effects are just and and then it's it's seen on uh, social media over and over again. Exactly uh, repeats uh, yes. on Sunday afternoon. Right. Everybody's talking about it. It's it's great. It's unbelievable. And then they do follow up. So they've already approached us to do a follow up. Um, and I can't wait for it. <laughs> Let's talk about your audition process then. I want to know what your audition process was. Did you go through the traditional me uh, means of going on the website? Did you have to go to a, a call, uh, waiting in the line? What, what was your process through this whole thing? And whose idea was it to get on the show? Um, it Actually, the, the opportunity came to us. Mm -hmm. And then through that, there was you know the video and... 
and that was a blast to make because you have to send in a really creative fun video so that was a big deal for us um, and then the application and we found out um, about two months later mm -hmm. and we were you know excited is not even you know it's the least of what we were feeling we couldn't wait so how did you prepare then for uh, what did you do what what were some of the things that uh, let's get a little specific here preparing to go on Shark Tank what did you do to prepare what what, what did you do to uh, get yourselves ready for the onslaught of the sharks uh, I had my numbers down like okay. I said <laughs> I can tell you man. down to the freaking <laughs> right. handicapped bathroom walkways where everything was budgeted because I knew you know that and I'm a numbers where I'm like we have to have that down they're gonna ask us a million questions numbers um, being prepared we had sessions like where I'd invite you know our family boyfriend brother sister and you know we'd hang out have pizza and some wine and have them shoot questions at us so we'd practice a lot, you know? I mean, it, you know, Lori had index cards. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a trip. But yeah, I mean, we absolutely did a lot of preparation in terms of uh, Q&A, a a lot of Q&A, and just making sure we had all of our bases covered. And um, we also prepared ourselves for what if they bring up the trucks, you know? They're, what if yeah. they say, why don't, I mean, we weren't expecting the whole segment was gonna be about it. Um, you know, so it was just a lot of preparation Q and A wise, mm -hmm. um, and then of course just um, having all of your ducks in a row. So, what was uh, Lori's experience then? Your partner, Lori Barbero. What was her experience on the show? What did she think about the whole process? Uh, if you can speak for her, um, she was a nervous wreck right before. <laughs> we both were. We both mm -hmm. were. I, we were nervous in our own ways. She was repeating. You know, you come on and you say, "Hi, I'm Erica Cohen, and I'm Lori Barbera." <laughs> Baby's Badass Burgers, I can say it in my sleep, is a playful pink, I mean, you know, so she, for an hour straight, it couldn't even, you couldn't talk to Lori, she was in a zone. Like, she was just in the zone memorizing. Um, and I was just a nervous wreck in, in a corner by myself. So her experience was probably like mine. We both wanted to throw up in that, like, hallway. And when you're walking down, and it's really, like, sometimes you think it's glamorous and dramatic, and they have that TV effect of you're walking down the hallway. But it really is that nerve-wracking. It really is like you have a pit in your stomach and you want to keel over. Um, so we were both nervous wrecks. But I think at the end of the day, she actually was a lot cooler than I was. Like when, when it actually ended, I um, really took it to heart. And I was, I was uh, pretty upset like for a good day or two, mm -hmm. and, you know, then shook it off. And she was, you know, look, she was very level-headed about it. Look, we knew we had a chance in hell, no chance in hell of getting the deal. We went on, it's exposure, it's great. I think I was upset just because I was so shocked at the way, you know, it turned out. Mm -hmm. when I'm like, we couldn't even get a word in, or they, it was all After about all the chocks. You know, it was just, yeah. I'm like, God, I've talked to my yeah. accountant 10 times. I did 15 yeah. budgets. Yeah. I'm like, we didn't, you know, they didn't even want to know about our experience. So I took it to heart a little bit more. She was just a little bit more level-headed about it. Now, there's something that they make you do or they don't make you do before you talk to the sharks. We were just talking to this before uh, mm -hmm. we went on air. And that's that they make you wait. Yes. They may tell us about that. What, huh. what, what was going through your head? What, what they make you do and what was going through your head during that time? <laughs> uh, this is hell is what was going through my head. Um, it's just so awkward. Uh -huh. You know, you come into this big room and the sharks are all sitting in front of you and there's a waiting period while they adjust the lighting and, you know... Oh, while you're, sta cues. you're standing yes. there? Yes, and so we're standing there oh, wow, and the sharks weird. are sitting there and we're just like all kind of like giggly and like smiling and looking away from each other. I mean, it's almost like before you kiss your first kiss. I don't... It was just an awkward... Like you're looking at the person, you don't know what to do, you look away... Um, I imagine you really felt being like you're inspected or something almost in front of all those. <laughs> it was just, um, I mean, Lori and I, then we'd look at each other and be like, this is crazy. You know, this is hell. Oh, wow. Like, it's just, that's, that's a very uncomfortable part. And then walking out, walking out uh, after your segment has been broadcast, has been aired, <clears throat> you're walking out. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that feeling when you didn't get that deal? When You said that you were mad, but when you were walking down... Uh, as opposed to walking in, uh, what kind of interaction did both of you have? Because I know that they have you tape a little segment where you're talking into the cameras afterward, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so when does that take place? And what was going through your mind with that? Um, that takes pa place literally directly after. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, it's tough. 
because you walk in, you have all the excitement and energy and adrenaline in the world and you're walking out and you don't get the deal and it didn't go as you thought. Um, so you're deflated, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's definitely tough. Um, and at the same time, at the same time, you know, they shut off the cameras and, and all of them, actually, they were very nice. They all said, you know, by the way, listen, that was literally one of the best burgers we've ever had. I mean, they were really kind about it. So, at le you know, we walked out at least with our head held semi-high because we were like, okay, kind of high-fiving each other. Look, they loved the frickin' burger, yeah. you know? All right, it can't, we didn't get the deal, but they loved the burger. But at the same time, yes, it's, it's, you're deflated and it's you know kind of a crummy feeling mm -hmm. but you got over it after a couple of days and then the I exposure did. from the show you had you said that you had people contact you uh, afterward the shark tank effect uh, yes. although everything seems to be falling into place for you guys yes. afterward tell us about the after experience then uh, and what it has done for you what what specifics have, have happened for you um the after experience is the best part about it <laughs> okay. um when it aired you know it was terribly exciting and um <laughs> you know it's a lot of fun and then just you know we're on the phone with social media and you know um into it just our numbers and facebook and we just got 50 more likes and people are twittering and you see the emails coming in and that is really just such a high you know because the show i mean it's proven and it's just with the shark tank effect i mean it hits so when it hits it hits big um and cousins jim and Saban, who were really friendly with said you know look girls you got to get your website in line you got to mm -hmm. you know get your own server i mean you're gonna so we did make all the preparation they're awesome they kind of talked us through it so after that it's kind of gangbusters um it's really fielding through a lot of emails and a lot of calls and it's very exciting did you want to add to that you know this has been kind of the recurring theme right ray yeah. people go and many of them have had bad experiences mm -hmm. but then because i guess well the the undying spirit of the entrepreneur sure they managed to hang in there and then the shark tank effect Kicks hits. in. <laughs> yeah. And you say, oh my goodness. Right. Oh my goodness. So again, so I guess it is worth it to struggle. Oh, 100, 10 times over. You know, Ray, we may want to show them one of the videos. Because it's one thing, you're, the presentation that you do, like like you said, it's, it is first rate, Erica. I have to get, And so uh, you have a wonderful video and the vibe on it, I think, kind of captures that burger Let's thing. Let's take a look at that then. Let's take a look at this video. And while you're queuing that up here, uh, oh, here we go. Let's take a look. It's the American dream. A cheeseburger in one hand and a beautiful woman in the other. In Los Angeles, California, grabbing a bite at Baby's Badass Burgers is like stepping onto a movie set. Laurie Barbara teamed up with business partner Eric Cohen three years ago. Her street food obsession is the burger. Oh my God, so good. <laughs> Critics might call it a delicious gourmet burger thrill ride. Starring the bombshell, the other woman, and the mm. all-American yeah. girl. Yeah. It's amazing, it's a great burger. Baby's Badass Burgers is babes, burgers, buns, good times. It's almost like a utopia, isn't it, for some minutes? A little bit, yeah. I always judge my taste on burgers, on just a simple cheeseburger, pickles and salad. The whole entire concept is very girly and really playful. Come for the burgers, stay for the buns. <laughs> <laughs> I like that! Yeah. I like that, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really good. Come for the burgers, stay for the buns. Yep. Now, that is a really cool video uh, that encapsulates exactly what you guys are all about. Now, who produced this? Who's the creative end on, on doing something like this? Um, a friend who's an unbelievable videographer and producer. Uh -huh. And um, he kind of encapsulated all these different shots that we had and took from, you well, know, different editing pieces and put this all together for us. And it's just a really kind of encapsulates this feel-good experience that you get with babies. Look right. at this in his hand, though, you guys. Everybody look at how big. <laughs> look at that burger. That's a big brother. <laughs> and you see, look, look at these. The burgers are huge. Yeah, it's a half a pound. That's half our, pound. our man-eater. And you had a chef. Mm -hmm. you, you went back and studied your burger again <laughs> yeah. and reconfigured the burger with executive chef Jason Rizek. Is yes. it Rizek? Wow. Yeah. Well, one word speaks a million words, Ray. Like I said, seeing that, 
yeah. kind of does a little something to you. Well, we're going to have to play a, pay a <laughs> visit to, uh, to your truck yes, here. Yes, you, we'll have, have, to track you, you guys have to and, taste them for yourself. Yeah, the burgers absolutely. really are crazy good. Okay, so uh, what uh, what other things now you got going? You got a restaurant now, right? Or No. No, you don't have a restaurant. No, we don't have a restaurant. We actually uh, just launched our second truck in mm-hmm. Jacksonville. Okay. And we oh, have uh, two more that will be open by the end of the summer. Wow, congratulations. You. you. guys are really expanding on that. Now, uh, let's let's take a look at, at this uh, hindsight. Twenty twenty years. Uh, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Right. Uh, going back on Shark Tank, or what would what, were, what are some things that you would do different, or you would advise somebody going on that you learned from going on the show? Expect the unexpected. Mm-hmm. Um, just do your due diligence. Know your numbers, and um, just be prepared for anything. But at the end of the day, if you don't get a deal, your business will change, and it's for the better. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, uh, and, 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 and speaking of the sharks, now, was there a shark there that uh, you related to the best, or, or, or was there somebody that you kind of connected with even though you didn't get a deal? They were actually, you know, people say, you know, wow, did you get beat up? Did, did that Was that horrible? I mean, to be honest with you, we didn't walk out. They were really nice. I mean, there was no one, you know, uh, there was a few moments. I mean, Mr. Wonderful wanted to burn the... <laughs> he made some <laughs> comment about burning the drawing, which wasn't very nice. But at the end of the day, they're all nice people. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark Cuban was kind of, in the beginning, you know, vying for us and kind of felt... I mean, they all, at one point, we felt like we had some leverage with them. But they really, you know, were insistent on the trucks, and that's what they wanted. And, yeah. you know, they just didn't see the, the brick and mortar. And, which is a, 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 an important point here that I want to make before we conclude here is this, is that when you have a vision, mm-hmm. even if you're in front of, 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 of like four of the most successful people, business people, five successful business people on the planet, mm-hmm. you have that vision. You know what's best for your business. Right. Sometimes you have to just stand That's your right. ground That's and you right. have to just keep going. Because when I read uh, uh, Maria, when I was reading her bio and doing studying for this interview, uh, the background that you had, I was thinking, this makes all sorts of sense mm-hmm. why she wanted to open up a restaurant. Because totally. you, you, you were successful before you came out of New York mm-hmm. with restaurants. Right, I got it. That's why I was like, wow, I, can, I, was act- I am excited still. Thank but I'm going to go have the burger, but don't worry, I'll be there. Well, listen, I'll try we will restaurant. have a brick and mortar. <laughs> yeah. And it will be from, I'll have Shark Tank to think, because there's a, a company now that's really interested. So we might be rolling out many of them, and then we'll have the trucks and the brick and mortar, and we can say... You know, we did it. We did it both. Erica, any both. last thoughts here? We got to get you out of here. I know you got to you got to run. But any last thoughts you'd like to share with our audience here? Um, just that you know, if you have a dream and if you are an entre- entrepreneur and um, you're ready to take it to the next level, and you can get it on get on that show, get on that show because it's all good. It really is. Well, much continued success, Mario. Anything you'd like to say? Uh, last things here. Just once again, it's so inspiring. Uh, to so many of us, especially those of us who are doing things like this internet television, to see these examples of people Thanks. who do their due diligence as we all try to do. But you do stand as an inspiration, so Thank get you. used to that, wow. too. Well, <laughs> you got to stand your ground and try and, try and make it happen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have been with, we have been with Erica Cohen, one half of Babies, Badass Burgers. You've seen her on uh, Shark Tank. Uh, if, uh, what's your website address, by the way? www.babies, B-A-B-Y-S, badassburgers.com. And you can track your truck there on your website? Absolutely. Is that, okay, yes. you can track the truck on the website, go out and t- taste one of these half-pound monstrous, <laughs> incredible Man burgers. Eaters, yeah. My book is coming out July 13th, uh, this year, 2013, Conversations with Shark Tank Winners, How the Shark Tank Effect Dramatically Increased Sales, Exposure, and More for These Successful Entrepreneurs. Thanks again, Erica. This is Ray Barr here at the Pack Stereo TV Studios. Mario Hemsley, Victor Allen back there doing a great job. Until next time, have a great week. Peace. Peace.